In this unit, we're going to study a lot about triangles, various types of triangles. We're going to look at their perimeters, their areas, and several formulas that you can use to find the area of a triangle. Uh, we're going to concentrate quite a bit on right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem, um, and some similar triangles and, and ratio and proportions. So first of all, let's talk about a scaling triangle, and that is one where there are no two sides equal in length. So I'm just going to attempt to draw some lines to create, and hopefully this software will let me connect to the vertices. And I'm going to call this a scaling triangle A, B, C. So I might call it triangle A, B, C. And I have drawn it such that no two sides are equal in length. I'm going to see if I can get my isosceles triangle tool, tool to work. Actually, it's, it's uh, I'm going to draw it using the triangle tool. So this is going to be an example of an isosceles triangle. And this is an example of an isosceles triangle. And what I'm trying to share with you here is that an isosceles triangle is one where two of the sides are equal in length. And we often show that congruency piece by putting tick marks. So these two sides are equal in length. And therefore, I want you to know that the angles opposite those sides are equal. So say this was angle A and this was angle B and angle C. Then in this triangle, angle A would equal angle B because it's an isosceles triangle and two sides are equal. Here would be the congruent sides in this isosceles triangle, and then here would be the congruent angles, or equal. We say congruent and equal. An equilateral triangle is one where all three sides are equal in length. All three sides are equal in length. I'll give that a shot as well. Um, lost my mouse. Here we go. Um, and so here's my idea <laughs> of an equilateral triangle. Uh, a little hard to do. Boy, let's go one more. Hopefully that's about an equilateral triangle. All three sides, again, are, um, in this case, are equal in length. And then, therefore, all three angles are equal in size. Well, what would be the size of those angles if the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees and all three of those have to be equal to one another? Yeah, those angles have to be 60 degrees apiece. Every one of the angles in an equilateral triangle are 60 degrees. Degrees. Again, all three sides are equal. And finally, in our study of trigonometry, we're going to do a lot with right triangles. I'm not going to let the software try to draw a right triangle for me because I, I, um, I tend to like my right triangle to lay in a certain direction. So I'm trying to get my right angle right here in the corner here, and now I'm going to draw this side. All right, so let's talk about right triangles. In a right triangle, one of the angles is a right angle or a 90 degree angle. We often, I need you to know, label that angle C. The side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse, and it is often labeled little c. But I'm going to put the word hypotenuse here. Again, often labeled lowercase c. The other two sides of the right triangle are called the legs of the right triangle. So these two are called the legs. And if I were to decide to name this capital letter A, then this leg that's opposite that would have to be called little letter A. And if I were to call this capital angle B, then this leg right here would have to be called side B, lowercase b. The sum of the three angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, and so I want you to know that angle A plus angle B will always be 90 degrees, or sometimes we say they are complementary, because that's the definition of complementary, 
is the sum of the two angles is 90 degrees. And that's because if this is 90 degrees, then these two have to add up to be 90 degrees for the total to be 180. All right. Let's talk a little bit about perimeter. Um, perimeter of any object is just its distance around the exterior. And so while we often write a formula for the perimeter of a triangle, which is just the sum of the sides of the triangle, I don't think that's necessary. If I tell you that the three sides of a triangle are these uh, lengths, then I just want you to add those up to tell me um, that the total length is 37. I don't have any units here, so I'm going to leave that be. All right. Um, the area of a triangle can be found in several ways. And one is a formula that you're very accustomed to, and that is you can find the area, sometimes we write this, as one half the base times the height. These pictures are not drawn real well in that they're not dimensioned. So I'm going to show you that this 16.2 is supposed to represent the base of this right triangle, and these are my dimension lines. This 5.75 is pointing to the height of the triangle from this vertex that is opposite this base. So that's what we mean by h. It's got to be the height from the vertex that is opposite the side that would be called the base. So in this particular problem, to find the area, I would take half of the base, which is 16.2 inches, and I'd multiply it by the height, which is 5.75 inches, and I also would do a little approximation. Half of 16 is about 8, and 8 times about 6 is approximately 48. But if you take your calculator and you type that out, you will find out that the area of this triangle is 46, and I'm going to call it 46.6 .6 because these have three significant digits, each. So I'm going to round this to 46.6 and remember that the area is in inches to the second power or inches squared because I multiplied inches times inches. Plus this is the unit of measure for area. It is square units. If I know the height from the vertex that is opposite a base that's been given, um, it has to be perpendicular to an extension on that base in order to use this formula. So one half the base times height, the height is the perpendicular distance to the opposite side, which is called the base from this vertex. So while I'm not, I don't need this length right here because the base of this triangle that I'm going to find the area for is 16 millimeters and the height that I'm going to use is the 7.62. Just remember that this is the only way to use this formula is if you have a base, you have to have the perpendicular distance from the vertex opposite that to that base or an extension on that base. So in this case, one half of the base of 16 millimeters times the height of 7.62 millimeters. Again, I'm doing an estimate. Half of 16 is 8, and 8 times 7 is 56, but that's a little bit more, so I'm going to say approximately 60. And if you took your calculator to do this, you would get 60.96. I need to try to round that to three significant digits, so that would be right here. Well, this 9 would become a 10, if you will, and so I'd have to carry a 1 over here, and so I'd write it as 61.0. Remember, it's an area, so that's in millimeters to the second power. This next problem, um, I do not have a height, and I do not have a right angle. Some people assume this is a right angle. All I have are the three sides, so, you know, I don't know the this value right here that's perpendicular to here. Again, these are not perpendicular, so I can't use those. So we're going to come back in our next unit, and we're going to use Hero's formula to find the area of a triangle when I know all three sides.